Astronomy is one of the oldest sciences because everyone has looked up at the stars since the dawn of history. But the history of the science is that we've gradually expanded our horizons. In the old days, people knew about the planets, but they thought the stars were in some sort of vault of heaven, just a bit further away than the planets. It was then gradually realized that the stars were much further away than the planets because they were as bright as the sun, but appeared so faint because of their great distances. And by the 19th century, it was clear that most stars were like the sun and that the size of the universe that was visible then was many, many thousands of light years. The next big step forward was in the 1920s when it was realized that our Milky Way galaxy was a huge disk of stars in which the sun was embedded, but that it was just one of many. The Andromeda galaxy, which is about two million light years away, is like our Milky Way. It's a spinning disk of gas viewed obliquely uh, with lots of stars in it, and it is something which contains about 100 billion stars. And in the 1920s and 30s, it was realized that these galaxies, fully equal to our Milky Way, are the basic large-scale constituents of the universe. But the trouble was that telescopes weren't then powerful enough to be able to see the very distant ones. And the history of astronomy really, ever since then, has been the history of more and more powerful instruments enabling us to observe in greater detail and out to greater distances. The next big step forward was to realize that the universe is not static, it's expanding. Distant galaxies are moving away from us, and the further away they are from us, the faster they are moving. This was originally discovered by Edwin Hubble, and it's been confirmed by much later observations. So we are in an expanding universe where everything started off crowded much closer together. And this raises two questions. What happened in the remote past, and what will happen in the remote future? In the remote past, we would infer that everything was squeezed very close together and galaxies couldn't exist in their present form. And so one of the aims of astronomy has been to understand the history of our universe in the past. And here we actually can do better than geologists can, because geologists can just infer fossils of the past, whereas we can actually see the past. We can see the past because distant galaxies are so far away that their light has taken a long time to get to us. And so when we see a distant galaxy, we see it not as it is now, but as it was in the past. And by looking at galaxies one billion, two billion, three billion light years away, we can look back one billion, two billion, three billion years into the past. And so we can learn something about what the universe was like earlier on when it was more compressed. And what we infer is that galaxies formed when the universe was about a tenth of its present scale and about a tenth of its present age. We also have other evidence about the very early universe, about the time when everything in the universe was squeezed to a very hot, dense gas, hotter than the center of a star. And this early universe, we can learn something about in other ways. And for the last 50 years, we've had a standard picture for the evolution of our universe from a hot, dense beginning to its present state. According to this picture, it started off very, very hot and dense and expanded. And after about 300,000 years, it cooled down to 3,000 degrees. At that time, all the atoms became neutral. The electrons tied themselves to protons to make hydrogen atoms. And then the universe cooled down still further, and then galaxies started to form. So we have this so-called hot Big Bang picture of the universe. Now, how far back can we go? If we extrapolate back when it was one second old, the temperature was about 10 billion degrees. And that's the time when nuclear reactions made hydrogen and helium. We can extrapolate back even further to when the universe was a nanosecond old. At that time, everything we now see with our telescopes out to 
billions of light years, would have been squeezed down to the size of our solar system. But many of the key questions about the universe, why is it expanding the way it is? Why does it contain the observed mix of atoms and radiation, etc.? They can't be answered unless we infer further back still. And the problem there is that when we go back into the first nanosecond, the conditions were so extreme that we lose our foothold in experimental physics. For the first nanosecond, every particle in the universe was moving with more energy than can be produced with the biggest accelerators, like the uh, Large Hadron Collider at CERN. So we don't know the physics. But nonetheless, many people believe that many key features of the universe were imprinted when the observable universe was squeezed not just to the size of our solar system, but to the size of a tennis ball, that size. This was when a process called inflation happened. And the physics is uncertain, but we do believe that we are seeing in the universe now relics of that very, very early stage. And this is uh, something which people are working on. Uh, we don't know the physics, but we're trying to observe fossils, as it were, of that very early stage. And that happened about 13.8 billion years ago. Well, what about the future of the universe? It's going on expanding, and the obvious question then is, will it go on expanding forever, or will it somehow stop expanding and recollapse back to what some people call a big crunch, when everything falls together again? That question was uncertain until um, two or three decades ago. It's now pretty clear that the universe is going to go and expand forever. We can't be sure, of course, because long-range forecasts are never reliable, but the best bet on the basis of what we now understand is that the expansion will continue, and indeed that the galaxies which we see with our telescopes will accelerate away from us. So the uh, uh, Doppler shift, the redshift of the light, will actually increase. So if we're observing a distant galaxy, and if we were able to live for billions of years and keep on observing it, we'd see this galaxy not only get further away, but accelerate away, and then finally disappear from view. The long-range forecast is that we will have a very cold and very empty universe, which will uh, um, continue forever, and of course all the stars in it will eventually die. If we were astronomers observing in a hundred billion years time, or maybe a thousand billion years time, we'd see a very different universe. We'd find that the Andromeda galaxy and our galaxy would have crashed together, because they're gravitationally bound to each other, and they would be the only things we could really see in the universe, because all the other galaxies would have receded from us, accelerated away from us, and they'd be, as it were, beyond our horizon. So we would then be in a rather dull universe, very cold, very empty, and indeed most of the stars would have died out because the fuel in stars only lasts for a finite time and only the very dim, faint stars would still be shining. Even further into the future, all the stars would be dead. There'd be no light in the universe at all. It would just be colder and emptier, and this would be a rather bleak future. So that is the far future of our universe, but then this raises another question. Is this uh, uh, cycle from Big Bang to ever-expanding universe, is this all of physical reality? Many people now don't think that. They think that our Big Bang was not the only one, and that our Big Bang is part of some grand ensemble, what the great Russian cosmologist Andrei Linde called eternal inflation. And this wonderful idea, which I think should be taken very seriously, suggests that our Big Bang uh, is uh, one of very many and that there will be others which lead to other cosmoses which we can't see, they're beyond our horizon, but they will trace out an evolution which could be like the evolution that our universe traced out. But more exciting still is that the physics in these other universes could be different from the physics in our universe. Some of them might have a stronger force of gravity, some of them might have quite different uh, atoms in them, uh, some of them might be uh, unpropitious for life, so they'd be sterile and stillborn, as it were. Some would have more interesting life in them than ours does. So the story of expanding horizons 
if we think of uh, the history of astronomy, has gone through many phases. We started off knowing about our solar system and the vault of heaven. We then realized that our uh, star, the sun, was one of billions in our galaxy. We then realized that our galaxy is one of billions we can see with our large telescopes. And then, now, thanks to Andre Linde and others, we're perhaps having a further Copernican revolution, realizing that our entire Big Bang, which gave rise to the universe that we can see, is just one of many, perhaps an infinite number, of Big Bangs. So we now have a far grander concept of physical reality. This last step, the step from a universe to a multiverse, is still speculative. But I'm hopeful that just as 50 years ago we didn't know if there was a Big Bang at all, whereas now we can talk in detail about the very early stage of the Big Bang. So 50 years from now, we will have the idea of a multiverse on a firm footing. It may all be wrong, but if it's correct, we will be able to say uh, something about physical reality, which will be far grander than we can say today.